Hello, welcome to our live webinar on integrating Dante into live audio and video workflows. My name is Rob Reed. We're here in our Los Angeles studios. And today I have with me Brad Price from Audinate. And I also have Brian Belcher from Roland. So uh, Brad, tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do with Audinate. Sure. Uh, I work in our Portland office and I'm a product manager and I oversee the development, creation, and marketing of most of our user-facing software for Dante. Excellent, thanks Brad for joining mm -hmm. us today. And we have Brian Belcher. Brian, tell us a little bit about your role with Roland. Thanks Rob. I am the sales engineer for Live Pro Audio and Video and uh, I handle all integration for the audio product and video product. Excellent, thanks for joining us today again Thank Brian. You. And my name is Rob Reed. I'm the business development manager for Roland Pro AV. And I help customers understand our video and audio products, help to put together webinars like this, as well as educational videos. And out there in the field, uh, helping to develop our channels in the K through 12, higher education, uh, corporate market, production rental market, those kind of things. So we welcome you today. Um, I'm going to cover a few uh, just slides here. I'm going to go over. Um, what our webinar overview is going to be today. So first of all, um, we're going to have Brad do uh, a little overview on Dante and how Dante works. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have Brian uh, cover the Dante controller and the overview of that as well. And then next, I'm going to be talking about integrating Dante for live video, recording, and streaming. And then we're going to have Brian cover how you integrate Dante for live audio. And then last but not least, of course, we're going to want to have you ask questions. So we're going to have a period of questions and answers. So I encourage you right now to uh, log into the web stream onto the chat and feel free to ask your questions throughout this broadcast, uh, both um, on our Ustream uh, page as well as we're also streaming live to Facebook. So feel free to ask your questions and we'll get to some of those at the very end of the broadcast. All right, so now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Brad, who's going to go over some slides on uh, Dante. Sure. So here you go, Brad. All right. I'll give you a little introduction into Dante networking, let you know what it is. First of all, uh, I want to answer the question, who is Audinate? This actually still comes up from time to time. Uh, we are a company in, out of Sydney, Australia, uh, formed by networking experts. And we have offices around the world, including Hong Kong, uh, London, and certainly Portland, Oregon. And we developed Dante as a uh, complete solution that we sell to the AV industry to give them a platform for network connectivity. And we develop every part of Dante. So it isn't just a protocol. We develop um, all the hardware that goes into products, all the tools used to develop this, the support for it, and of course, software for end users. Uh, so we do every little part of Dante. The thing about Dante that's especially notable is that it provides 100% guaranteed interoperability to every uh, company's products that use it, no matter what the brands, they can all talk to each other with Dante. And this has resulted in, in it becoming the most popular uh, audio uh, networking protocol available uh, by leaps and bounds, really. There's uh, tons of it out there. We now have over 1,000 products from over 350 manufacturers, and this number is going up rapidly. And this has a real pronounced effect upon what you can do with Dante is, of course, it means you've got lots and lots and lots of different products that you can connect to create all kinds of systems. I'll tell you a little bit about the technology behind it. This is a completely uncompressed multi-channel IP audio networking solution, and it provides uh, a tremendous amount of bandwidth, as you can see there in the little bubble. It's up to 512 bidirectional channels, that's in and out, per port. That's what the system is capable of. It has almost near zero latency, very tight synchronization of time, all the devices synced within a microsecond of each other. And most importantly, it uses off-the-shelf networking equipment and cables. You don't need special switches, special cables. This works with networking gear that's out there on the market right now. And it has the effect of replacing hundreds and hundreds of analog cables, miles and miles of copper, with simple, lightweight Cat5 uh, Ethernet cable. Because it is a true IP product and it works on computers and with computers and like computers, it means that we can apply the same management techniques to it. So we've announced this year a new product called Dante Domain Manager. And Dante Domain Manager gives you IT level control over 
what the product does. So you can control who gets to access zones in the system, who gets to control stuff, who gets to make any changes, and you get reports on all of this so that you can see who did what and when. And this also allows you to expand Dante in large environments to cross large multi-subnet networks so that it can really be expanded now across an entire campus. But for the nuts and bolts of it, let's talk about Dante Controller a moment. We'll be seeing more of this in, later on in this presentation. Um, but Dante Controller is how you basically operate Dante, how you do all your routes. It's free software that we provide uh, for Windows and Mac. You can download it right at Audinate.com. And when you have that on your computer and you're on a Dante system, you see a grid view. You've got all the transmitter channels on the top horizontal and all the receivers on the left side vertical. You can see all the devices, open them up, see all the channels, and it's just as simple as clicking at the intersections of those channels. You've made a subscription, audio starts to flow instantly. So it's really just that simple to create connections of any type you want. We often get asked about clocking. Of course, that's a critical, important issue in any sort of digital audio system. And the important thing to note is that Dante automatically takes care of clocking. And it's recommended that if you're not using an external clock, like the clock from a console or something, because maybe you don't need it for that uh, instance, go ahead and let Dante's automatic clock selection do its work. It'll always provide a really stable clock. If, however, you are using a console to clock your entire system, which would be entirely logical if you're using other digital devices at the same time, well, then you can tell Dante to use that clock from that console. So set it up in the console, in Dante controller, tell it to enable syncing to that, and away you go. I also want to let you know about all the interoperability that, that Dante provides. As I said at the very beginning of this um, deck here, um, we've got over a thousand products that are out on the market right now using Dante. And with the Dante XI card, uh, you can now connect a V1200HD or M5000 to any number of these products. Uh, it, they will all work, that's a guarantee. And this allows you to create really innovative workflows with the XI Dante expansion interface. You can embed multi-channel audio coming from a Dante system, perhaps a live show, perhaps a group of speakers, whatever it might be. You can integrate that into uh, SDI or HDMI signals using the V1200, and you can go in reverse. You can de-embed audio signals from SDI or HDMI and then send it over to whatever Dante system you want for recording, distribution over a live sound system. All easy to do. And with the M5000, which is truly an amazing system, uh, you can now integrate that with all the other products that are out there in the Dante universe. DSPs, amplifiers, powered speakers, microphones, you name it. They're out there. So the interoperability means you can really expand your system with Dante on it. Excellent, Brad. Thanks you so much for the uh, overview of Dante. As you can see, it's very, very powerful. We've actually set up a Dante network in the studio today. And so um, what we're going to do next is we have a computer running a Dante network. And Brian is going to be going to his computer and uh, that has the Dante controller on it and show you how to set that up with both the M5000 and with the V1200. So Brian, take it away. Thanks, Rob. So what we have today is my laptop is actually playing 16 tracks of audio onto the Dante network. You'll see it listed here as Brian's MacBook Pro. Also the M5000 and the V1200. You can obviously patch those items in a crosshair fashion, fashion. But also a little tip and trick for me that I love is that you can double click on the item and it takes you to a controller window that lets you look at a device at a time. So in this kind of scenario, I look at my MacBook currently and I click the transmit tab and it shows me that I'm transmitting. You can see the green speakers letting me know I have audio on the network. But now I wanna to go to the M5000 and I wanna receive. So I click M5000 receive. And then you can see that my MacBook or my M5000 is receiving signal channel one over my MacBook Pro and it is connected. You also could assign any of those ins and outs to the 1200. This screen is important to me and I think to a lot of people because not only can you get into the receive and transmit, but you also get to adjust your latency settings, see them, and most importantly, you get to go in and name your devices, choose your sample rate, and choose your sample or your device latencies. So very important that you look at this controller. The most common misconception with Dante is that you patch it on your console or you patch it in your product and it just works. 
Well, there's one more step and it's Dante Controller. Once you've put the information on the network, the next step is then to assign it to a channel on a device. Rob? Great, thanks Brian. That's a great overview of how to connect uh, Dante to our uh, M5000 and to the V1200. So next I'm gonna actually uh, talk about uh, the V1200 and specifically some workflows and Dante into the V1200. So I've got some slides here. Um, the V1200 is a 2ME switcher and processor. So what that allows you to do is actually have 1ME for mixing for the event space and 1ME mixing for, let's say, like a broadcast or record or a web stream. As a matter of fact, today, uh, this live stream is, uh, we are using the V1200 as the video switcher and we are using the M5000 as the audio mixer. So mixing all of our audio channels, all of our video channels and embedding it together out to a web stream uh, going to Facebook Live and going to uh, our Ustream page. So let's talk a little bit about the V1200 control and I think this is really really important in live production workflows and the V1200 you can have up to two operators so what that allows you to do again ME1 can be your broadcast mix and ME2 can be your event mix so you can have two separate operators on one network Another example might be one of the V1200 HDR controllers and a Microsoft Surface tablet mixing either audio or a separate, a separate broadcast feed as well. So very, very flexible in, uh, for especially for live production workflows in a church environment, corporate AV environment, that type of thing. Let's talk a little bit about the back of the V1200 real quickly. There's six SDI outs and two HDMI outs but you have full flexibility. One can be your preview out, your program out, your production out, your broadcast out, your stream out, your record out. It can even go to an overflow room. Again, in many of those instances, you need to integrate audio into that SDI or video output signal. So that's where Dante comes into play. And the good news is the V1200 has uh, two expansion cards in the back, and one of those can be the XI Dante card. In this particular environment with the V1200, the V1200 can see up to 16 channels of audio on a Dante network, or you can route it through the Dante controller to the V1200. So 16 channels in, 16 channels out at 48 kilohertz. Let's look a little bit more at the audio structure of the V1200 HD. As you can see on the left-hand side, those are our inputs. So we have 92 different inputs. So coming from SDI 1, 2, 3, and 4, each of those uh, ports have 16 channels of audio, and then HDMI 1, 2, 3, and 4, plus XLR, or analog inputs on the back as well, and as you can see, the expansion cards as well. So for Dante, or you can de-embed uh, audio from SDI signals in your expansion card as well. So with that, then you have your outputs that can go to your SDI outs, your HDMI outs, your XLR, all being able to embed audio into those uh, channels and into those ports. So the nice thing about working in this environment is you have direct patching of 92 inputs and 92 outputs. Pretty powerful in a video mixer. All right, let's talk a little bit about the audio structure of the V1200. Um, as we mentioned, um, there is a patch bay, but we also have a delay module. So if I need to delay my audio to match my video signal before I embed it back into the SDI signal or HDMI signal, it's got built-in delay capabilities. It also has, as we mentioned, a 16-channel audio mixer. So the 16-channel audio mixer is extremely powerful as well. So you can do a separate broadcast mix or record mix or stream mix in the V1200. And I'll bring up the channel strip. You have the capability of adding EQ, you have a reverb send, you can add additional delay if needed, and you also have two aux sends outs as well. So you can send a specific audio channel out an aux. So pretty powerful. Let's talk a little bit about the XI Dante workflow. In this scenario, as you can see on the left-hand side, we have aes -EBU or stereo analog ins as well as your SDI inputs and HDMI inputs all going into the V1200 audio structure and you can patch 16 sources to the Dante output and send those directly over the Dante network to your live audio console. Mm -hmm. So this is great for de-embedding audio from an HDMI signal, an SDI signal, and not having to have a separate de-embedder or embedder in terms of the audio side. Here's another workflow where maybe we want to send the live 
um, we're, maybe we're doing a broadcast of a band or something like that and you have audio coming into our live audio console, we want to send that out to our web stream or record and we hear this constantly, the video guys are saying, man, the audio that I get from the audio console just doesn't work. Well, we can send those audio channels separately over the Dante network into the V1200 and have our separate mix for our broadcast or web stream or record. So pretty, pretty powerful. Again, here's another scenario of workflows. So you can see the top one, a non-Dante workflow. You can see our, maybe our, our PC or Mac or Blu-ray player. We have to split the video to go to the video mixer audio to the audio console, mix it in the audio console, send it back to an AV embedder, and then back to the video mixer so that you can go out to your web stream or, or record or broadcast. What's cool in the Dante workflow is you can take the Blu-ray and the audio and video, go into the V1200, de-embed the audio, and send it to your live audio console so you can mix the audio for the room or for the event broadcast. So pretty, pretty powerful workflows. So next, I'm actually going to go demonstrate how you patch um, Dante using the V1200. So I have one set up over here. As you can see, I have the V1200 controller. On the left-hand side, I have my multi-view monitor, and that multi-view is so I can see my video sources. On the right-hand side, I have my structure, my audio and video structure, you can see. So this is the processor, this is my video structure, audio structure, etc. I tap on the audio button, this brings up my audio structure, which I showed earlier in my slides. And um, my, my Dante card is in expansion B, so I just want to make sure that I toggle that button down so it's expansion B. And then I go into my patch bay, and I can say my inputs are coming from my expansion card, or SDI. Every single one of these um, inputs is a patch point. And so one of my inputs on Dante is my patch point. I can see 16 channels patched to my mixer built into the V1200. So you can see it's a one-to-one -one scenario. Input one is going into mixer one, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so let's go into the mixer itself. I tap on this screen, and you can see I have Dante audio coming in all 16 channels. I also have two aux sends, a solo bus, and a main bus. And within the audio structure, as I mentioned, I tap on here, and it brings up my audio channel strip, and I've got my EQ, and my delay, and my reverb, et cetera, et cetera. So very, very powerful in getting audio into the V1200, as well as audio out from the V1200. Let me show you that scenario as well. I go to my patch bay, and maybe my input is going to be an SDI source, and I want to send that out to the expansion port. So now I can de-embed audio coming from SDI 7 up to 16 channels and patch it back to the Dante network. So you can see that um, in there. So very, very powerful. All right, so that's how you patch a Dante into the V1200. Next, I'm going to turn it over to Brian, who's going to do some slides on the M5000 and explain a little bit about the M5000 and how you patch Dante into the M5000. Thanks, Rob. So let's just do a quick overview of the M5000, the Orca series of consoles, so everyone has an idea what's going on. The M5000 and the 5000C are 128 audio path configurable architecture with a native resolution of 24-bit 96K. They do have two expansion card slots on them available, so you can put an XI Dante card in, and uh, anything that touches the desk can be translated out to Dante. Here's a great example of how a normal ecosystem would live for us. You have our stage boxes going through R1000 recorders, all going into the console, and then we can choose what goes out to the Dante card. So let's take a look for a second of how to patch the console, and then also a couple uses of how we would use Dante in a workflow. So if you look at the console, You'll touch the patch bay, and currently I've got it patched. I can go over here and say, hey, I want to choose the Dante line. Whatever card slot you're in, it would be D or E on the console. And if my fingers would work today, Dante. You can see all 30 channels showing audio. I want to patch 30 of them. I press the first one. It patched the audio. Now, what are some great examples of how to use the console in coordination with Dante and video are very simple. 
uh, in a video presentation, you may want to sweeten the audio. You may want to add reverb. You may want to add room mics. You may have more than 16 channels of audio that the V1200 you want to mix with. Or if you just want to pass audio back and forth, or you need dry lines over into video, or just simply you want someone to mix a true broadcast feed, throw it on the Dante network. It's available on multiple devices, and it'll be an easy concept for everyone to get. I think it's a wonderful addition to the console line, and I think it makes our workflow even better. Rob? Thanks, Brian. I really appreciate the uh, explanation. We've covered a lot of uh, tips and tricks on integrating Dante into audio and video workflows. Um, I think next we're going to take a real quick break here and look to see if we have any audience questions. I know we're streaming on Facebook Live, and I know that we have a Ustream uh, uh, stream as well. So we'll take a look and see if we have any questions, because we want to make sure that we'll be able to answer those uh, on the broadcast. Let's see here. I have someone monitoring it to see if we have any questions. Any other uh, comments or anything else maybe we didn't cover um, in our workflow you think is important? Tips and tricks, Brian? I think it's important to, uh, for everyone to understand that the clock rate of your device is important in the configuration mm -hmm. of all products. Even though Dante Controller may see a device that is clocked at 96, if, the, if you want to actually transmit and receive audio on a device that's at 48K or something other than 96K, for instance, they need to match up. There is no sample rate conversion inside of Dante. So it is a, a true like-like scenario. Even though you can see it in Dante Controller, you will not be able to pass audio. So I think that's where most people stumble. I think that's where most people find their issues is they uh, haven't gone into the device view like I showed and checked to make sure their sample rate is correct. Very good, and I think that's a great point. Um, and I just got texted a question about that very specific one, mm -hmm. how do you handle Dante at 96K? And so I think that's a great point that you need everything to match. And specifically with the V1200, I know that we need to handle the audio at 48K. Right. So. I think the, the standard of Dante, and, and, and Brad can chime in, sure. is that it is a Dante set parameter that at 96K, it's 32 channels of audio. It's not a uh, manufacturer-specific issue. It, it's not really an issue. It's just a, it's what the protocol is. Um, so everything matches. 48K, you get 64 channels bidirectional. At 96K, you get 32 channels bidirectional. Right. Brad, do you have any other tips and tricks on Dante and... I just wanted to make it uh, clear, um, in case it, it isn't, because this is another common misconception, is that uh, Dante Controller doesn't need to remain on the network in order for it to work. Uh, Dante Controller is really a, a real-time product. It looks at the network, sees what is there, shows it to you, lets you make changes. But once that's all done, mm -hmm. it, the Dante devices are the things that actually know what's going on and keep track. So once you have a system set, you can close Dante Controller, remove that PC if you don't want it there, you'll be fine. And another thing to note is that because it's the Dante devices that hold all this information, um, if you power a whole system down and then power it back up, everything just comes back. And it would even do this if I change the cabling, put in a different switch, whatever subscriptions exist between devices, if you power them down and they both come up again, they're going to locate each other and form a subscription. Very good. We have a couple more questions that are, that are coming in. Uh, how do you handle audio and video sync in the V1200 with Dante? Mm. Well, the cool thing about the V1200 is it has um, a delay module. So once you bring in the audio, you can delay that to match the video before you send it to the mixer or route it back through uh, the, the Dante network. That's important. Um, so it has a delay module um, separately, and it also has delay built into the mixer as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. On each individual of the 16 channels. Exactly, on each of the individual 16 channels, which is really, really cool. So it handles it very well. Um, here's another question, a Facebook question. Um, any AES67 support? I think this one might be for you, Brad. Um, yeah, this, is, this product is using uh, the module that does uh, support that. I, however, that is a manufacturable, a manufacturer's oh, okay. selection as to whether they turn that on. Okay, that, so Dante supports AES-67. Dante supports AES-67, but it is um, 
Uh, it is not available at the pure software level. It's available only on the large, on some of the larger devices. Well, no, small channel count ones too, uh, coming up. But uh, it is something that a manufacturer can choose to support or not support in the configuration. Sure. So it's currently not available on the M5000 or the 1200. But as Brad said, it is a portion of uh, the product that's already built in. So obviously development will ensue at some point. Very good. Looking to see if we have any other questions come through. Uh, maybe one more coming through. Um, at the end of this presentation, yeah, go ahead, Brad. I was going to say, can we, I wanted to thank Brad too. One of the major updates that came with the, uh, the new update with controller was the ability to pin lock devices. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important for people to understand that in that device view window that I showed you in controller, there actually is a place you can put a pin code in and you can lock a device on the network so that if someone astray gains access to the network, that they can't actually de-subscribe you from channels or re-subscribe you to other channels you might not necessarily want. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, you added wireless control um, from right. control, the Dante controller can now be on a, uh, can be used wirelessly anywhere in the room rather than having to uh, plug into a jack. It, so. That brings up one other point that um, is probably worth mentioning because it still gets asked, <laughs> does Dante Audio uh, work over Wi-Fi? Uh, no, it, it doesn't. And the reason is that Wi-Fi just is not ready for that kind of continuous, uh, reliable throughput. It has too many problems because it's still radio when you get down to it. So. Um, we can do control over Wi-Fi, but Dante level audio, no, yeah, not yet. Here's a great question for you, Brad, that, mm -hmm. that came in. It says, uh, do you need the, uh, the Dante controller the whole time, or can you set it and forget it? You can set it and forget it. A Dante controller writes its information into Dante devices. Every little Dante device that's in a product is a complete little computer with memory for all this stuff. So yeah. it just holds on to it and reconnects itself. I think that's really important and really key. Once you set yeah. it and forget it, you can unplug it. You can yeah. go set up at another venue, plug it back in. Everything comes exactly. up. Exactly. Yeah. Well, very good. It looks like we've answered most of the questions online. But if for some reason we didn't get to your questions, um, we want to leave you with our contact details. So I have a slide here on our contact details. Get your pencils ready. Yeah, get your pencils ready. <laughs> so feel free to reach out to us via email. We're happy to answer your questions at any time. And uh, feel free to, uh, to, to hit us up, and we'll be happy to, to hopefully answer any questions you have. So we want to thank you again for tuning in, and uh, we appreciate your time and opportunity. And again, uh, have a great day. Thank you very much.